Hey, what's up guys, John here. We're witnessing the biggest change to property ownership that we've ever seen in US history. And it's all gonna be wrapping around these floods that are happening everywhere. Look at New York City, for example. They posted today on Barstool Sports, 1.2 million views in one hour. This is how viral this video is going. I'm gonna show you this video, it's absolutely crazy. Before I do, please hit the like button. YouTube will share this content to educate the real estate investors, other people thinking about investing in real estate. Tell them what's really going on, backed by facts. And if you wanna fix your credit, we'd love to help you. If you have late payments, medical bills, charge offs, foreclosures, bankruptcies, repossessions, any negative item, schedule a free strategy session. See how we can help you. We'll tell you exactly what the process will look like for your specific situation, give you some free advice, some guidance. Don't let this sit on your credit report and get in the way of a bright future. Go to greatcardfast.com, click the link below. Um, schedule a free strategy session. Take a look at this. So this is crazy. This is right in the heart of the city, right in the heart of the city. What this means, is so much bigger than what a lot of people think. A lot of people see this like, ah, who cares? It's a flood, it's not a big deal. But what this actually means is that insurance companies are gonna use this as a way to rug pull the auto industry, the housing market, both residential and commercial, everything. They're gonna say that this is all costing them billions and billions of dollars and they have no choice but to jack up everybody's rates. 26.9 billion is what they are saying their losses were just for last year. Now think about the things that have happened so far this year. You have the situation in Hawaii, you have the fires in California, you have all of these situations in Florida. I mean, you had the Fort Myers situation that happened late last year, but then this year you had a hurricane, uh, what was that, Lee? That was, and then you had another one, uh, I believe it was Irma or another, one near uh, Tampa. There was two in just the last you know, month, month and a half. So you have all these situations, one after the next, one after the next, and these insurance companies are gonna push out all these costs across America. But it gets much bigger than that. Remember last year in Philly, in Philly, Philly never has any problems, never, um, you know, like this. You look at this, this is the exit ramp. This is right next to Ben Franklin Bridge, center city, right, and right near Old City, the prime area. And then you have this, this is near, I mean, look at this. You could literally probably swim and touch that. I wouldn't recommend it, but you could. Like that's how high the flooding is. This is next to uh, to UPenn and Drexel in between these two colleges in Center City. This is right in the heart of the city, right off 76. So you're starting to see all of these losses that are getting pushed out that you know these scenarios never happened before, but now they're happening. It seems like every other week, every couple of weeks, something huge is happening. But a lot of people see this and they're like, okay, it's just insurance, it's not that big of a deal. If you don't pay, if you don't have the money to pay for these in, increased insurance premiums, the, the lender's gonna take your property, point blank. They're gonna take it. If you can't, if you have a mortgage, you have to have insurance. If you don't, they're gonna take the property. So how does this work? So look at this. Not having homeowner's insurance can be a valid reason for a lender to foreclose on a property, like property taxes, the mortgage contract likely includes a clause requiring a homeowner to maintain adequate homeowner's insurance failure to maintain the coverage would violate the mortgage contract. So if you bought a property, let's say, easy math, let's say you bought a property, 500,000 bucks, right? You put 6% down, that's the average down payment. And you bought it in Florida, which a lot of people did. The average insurance in Florida, look at this. So this is how average homeowner's insurance in Florida. Scroll down here. Um, about homeowners in the state pay private insurance about six grand a year. Um, some are saying 4,200 bucks. Like ballpark, it's about five grand. Right, so if you're paying five grand in Florida for property insurance, right, for 5,500 bucks, uh, we'll go to five grand just to be conservative. So $5,000 a year, property taxes, you're gonna probably pay a little bit more than 0.92%, but let's just 500,000 on purchase price, 6% down, 8% mortgage rate, which is today's rates, not bad, 4,500 bucks a month. Right? Like how insane is that? It's absolutely crazy. So these insurance rates are gonna continue to get more and more and more expensive. So let's say for example, next year, it's not 5,000, it is 6,000. So the payment goes from 45, 46 to 46, 30. So every month it's just getting more expensive and it's, it's the utility bill is getting more expensive. Everything is getting more expensive. So the big question is, how are these property owners gonna be able to hold on? Look at what this came, this all came out, this is Florida. Uh, but it, this is not just in Florida. Look at California, all these big insurers walk away from the state. You have a lot of insurance companies folding, going under, they're acquiring other companies. There's gonna be a monopoly that's being built around the insurance space. And if a variety of different companies control the insurance market, they control property values, they control the real estate market, they control affordability, they control everything. 
So look at what this said. Citizen Insurance rolls out a new wave of these letters. I'm not even going to say that word. Uh, more expected soon. And so when you look at what these letters say, right? They say more expected soon. The, these letters, efforts come in response to the growth following last year's hurricane season. So if you receive a letter, do not throw it out. It's either a letter letting you know that you've been kicked off of Citizen's Insurance or have the option to stay with them and what your next steps are aka how much more you're going to have to pay. You know, anytime you get an increase from homeowner's insurance, it's shocking because you know it's going to affect you, right? And so they say that we're all very worried, to say the least, because of these, this process is hectic for us. It gets all us, gets us all scrambling to make sure people are being put in the correct places and that nobody is overcharged when they shouldn't be. Hundreds of thousands of policies, policyholders are getting letters from the state insurance asking them to switch to private insurance companies. We are now the largest private property insurance in the state. We are attempting to get back to our role of the state insurance of last resort, right? There are currently around 1.4 million policies, yet the estimates 500,000 are qualified to be insured by them. So all these people are gonna get kicked off of citizens that are used to these you know, more affordable rates. They're gonna get kicked off and they're gonna get pushed onto private insurance, which is gonna charge much, much more. So. You have to ask yourself, how are people going to be able to afford it? How? They're not, right? They're not. And this is, there's going to be a, a few options people have. They can self-insure, meaning they have no mortgage on the property. They owe it, they own it free and clear. They can essentially say, you know what? Hurricane comes, problems come. I will pay for the damages myself. I won't pay for insurance. They have an option. You know, a lot of people own their property outright. So that's an option for some. Most people don't. Most people have a mortgage. They have a huge mortgage. And so those people they're going to have a problem that, you know, if their income is not increasing with inflation, with the, the insurance premiums, with the utility bills, with everything else going up, they're going to be pushed into a financial hardship every single year. It's going to get more and more and more expensive. You know, insurance in Florida has increased a whopping 40% for most, uh, most policyholders over the last 12 months. So look at this. I mean, this is, this is what I've been saying for the longest time, probably the last year and a half, two years ago, or last year and a half to two years. I've been saying that this, these words here is what's going to change the entire housing market. And I came across this because I was looking at things a while ago and connecting the dots on it, and it just made the most sense. You have Glenn Kelman coming out, the CEO of Redfin coming out, saying that people don't understand what this means, that if rates continue to increase, lenders are not going to want to lend there, Insurance companies are not going to want to write policies there. Homeowners that own properties there, when they want to sell, they're going to have a smaller pool of buyers. Everyone's getting priced out of that market because insurance, prop or insurance premiums in Pinellas County and these areas are going through the roof. And then you have these big companies, whoop, step in, pick up a billion dollars worth of property when not many other people can. And, uh, and they're going to probably make a ton of money on it, of course, it's Blackstone. So when you look at this, this is what's going to happen. It presents a massive opportunity for wealthy and well-capitalized borrowers, smart and savvy investors, people that have their stuff together to go in there and step up and, uh, and pick a property because that's what's ultimately going to happen. California Insurance Commissioner acts to include these risks in property insurance rates, right, six days ago. Um, I mean, you had Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren saying that insurance companies need to be more responsible by letting, letting policyholders know the risk and that they need to factor in the risk in their policies. Essentially saying, hey, you know what? Yeah, we've been telling you know, the middle class that we're here to protect them and save them and help them. But on the flip side, middle class that can barely afford to feed themselves, we're gonna try to make things a little bit more expensive, right? And this is not a political position. This is exactly what they said. They said this, um, that they want insurance to essentially increase. You can look it up yourself. Uh, it's crazy what's happening. America's declining to buy homeowners insurance as premium soar. Yeah, if they have the option to. So when you start to see these things happening, and then it says it right here, that this is coming for America's property market. It's, of course it is. Of course it is. At the perfect time for them. Because if you think about this, in 2021, everybody, everybody and their mom and dad was buying single family homes, multifamily properties, commercial properties with the notion that we're all going back to 2018 and everything's gonna go back to normal and inflation is the biggest problem that we have and the smartest move is to borrow as much money as humanly possible to invest in commercial and rental properties because rents are increasing at 20, 30% a year and this is gonna be the new normal. And, uh, and ultimately what's now happening is rents are starting to fall 
but the cost to own these properties are only continuing to rise as interest rates rise and insurance and taxes rise and all these new changes start to get implemented. So what's ultimately happening? All that wealth that was transferred and that many people thought that they had all this money in 2021 and 2022 because borrowing was just so cheap. You could borrow a million bucks for four grand a month. It's crazy. Now you borrow a million bucks, it's 7,800 bucks, eight grand a month. So it's crazy how expensive things are. But for people that bought these properties that their cash flow is just so small, when everything changes and, and that 20% rent bump they were expecting isn't 20%, in fact, it's negative 2%, and then insurance and taxes are going up and they have to refinance in the next year or two, it's a problem. It's a big problem, but it's a big opportunity for Blackstone. A lot of these private equity firms, I'm not throwing them under the bus, but a lot of uh, big private equity firms and investing groups are gonna be looking at this saying, you know what? All these desirable markets just happen to be in risky areas. You know, Santa Monica or, you know, all these Venice Beach, all these areas near the other coast. You have Miami, you have all these areas up and down the coast that is just prime, prime, prime A-plus property. New York City, you know, now with this situation, everybody, you know, everybody that has a deep pockets wants to own New York City, right? So all these areas are, everyone's going to get pushed out, right? So I think some very interesting things are going to be happening in the housing market. I think that the next couple of years, you know, I've, I've said 2020, 2021, a lot of money was made, but in 2024 and 2025, fortunes will be created. That's what's happening. We're walking into a massive, massive wealth transfer right now. People need to really, really pay attention to it. If you are thinking about buying a property in an area, you should speak to an insurance provider before you do. For example, I was under contract to buy a property in St. Pete Beach in Florida, a prime area, and I was under contract and during my due diligence process, I talked to a insurance rep and the insurance rep told me, by the way, insurance is going to double when they transfer ownership to you. And I said, okay, well, will it continue to like be increased at the same rate? He said, it won't double every single year, but you can count on at least 20 to 30%. And so at that point, it didn't really make any sense to me to move forward on the transaction. I canceled. So just do your due diligence, do your homework, do your research, really, really, really look at the downside risk on all deals right now. I think there's going to be, you know, there's good deals that can be found in all markets, but in bad markets, they're everywhere, right? I mean, look at this. I started this video uh, 10 minutes ago. It was 1.2 million views. Now it's 1.4 million views. So this is, this is how viral this is getting, right? People are aware that, that everything's going to change around flooding, around the environment, around insurance, around property. Drop below, hit the like button, add me on IG. And if you want to fix your credit to position yourself with the greatest wealth transfer of all time, schedule a free strategy session. Free strategy session. Uh, Eric will go over your credit report with you. She'll tell you exactly what's on there, what the best game plan and strategy will likely be, how long she thinks it will likely take to you know, remove these items. Um, and the reason which we like to do the free strategy session is we can manage expectations properly to make sure we're working with the right type of client. And she'll tell you, this is how long we think it's going to take. Does this make sense for you? The answer is no. She'll give you some free advice. If the answer is yes, we'd love to help you. Greatcreditfast.com. Book a free strategy session below. I'll catch you guys in the next video.